Hello, my name is Dr. John Troyer, and I'm the Death Studies Scholar at Large in the Center for Death and Society at the University of Bath, and I am here today in one of Bath's many cemeteries, uh, looking around um, at all the spaces and thinking about uh, Halloween. Depending on where you're born or how you're raised, it could be a religious faith, it could be just a different cultural practice, even the part of the world. Um, that can significantly shape how you perceive death and dying, both on a personal level, but also on a family level, but also in a community. So if you grew up in the States like I did in the Midwest, that'll have one kind of idea based on, say, Protestant Methodist upbringing that I went through. Or if you grew up in, say, different parts of Asia, such as China or Japan or different parts of Europe or down in Central and South America, all these places will have an impact in how you think about it. But then too, also your personal experiences, so how do you then understand those practices and make sense of what happens when someone dies. I've always argued that gravestones um, are really, they're an early example of a kind of social media that's trying to explain that someone had lived a life and we've moved things digitally, but the gravestones do the same kind of thing. So there's debate about where marking of stones comes from, and if you ever want to get a good one going, just ask anthropologists and archaeologists to discuss where they all came from. But there is a, a strong belief that the stone marking or laying out stones starts many eons ago, uh, and sometimes there may not be inscriptions, but they could have been stones to note that someone had died. And then eventually over, sometimes what's referred to as a folk art tradition, you begin then to see uh, inscriptions placed on them in um, well, even sort of Neolithic, but then certainly in other, other traditions, searching all the way back to the Greeks and Romans and then in, around the world. Uh, and then they eventually develop into what we think of today as being a very Victorian practice uh, that continues into the 21st century. It's not as if we don't have gravestones anymore. So they've sort of progressed from hand, hand etching all the way into things like laser etching and other kinds of stones. But why do we have them is to mark that someone is buried there and you know, lived a life, uh, something to think about, their name, their dates, those kinds of, uh, that kind of information. Um, so the fear of death, it's an interesting question because uh, colleagues who work in psychology will talk about people's fear of death and there'll be there's a debate a discussion around is that innate is that something that's learned I tend to come from the this is a learned school of thought because I, I, I think that depending on how you raise or how you think about death and dying there isn't necessarily anything terrifying about it although there are certainly people who are who are scared of dying or scared of death or don't like those topics but then there are people who don't like spiders or rats or you know cr talking about credit card debt um, so, <laughs> I mean, you, know, you can take things however you want to. That said, um, is there a role for the fear of death? Well, I think so. In a way, you can think about it almost in an evolutionary sense, that one of the reasons we want to uh, persevere in living is because if, if we didn't, then there would be a sharp decline in the, the species as a whole. But that said, what can we learn from the fear of death? I think it makes us contemplate our mortality.